Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. Hello to all of our ministry partners and all of you, and thank you all for how you have just been sharing our content, liking, and uh, make sure you share the goodness of God with somebody else before this day ends. I want to talk to you a little bit today on this terrific Tuesday about how terrific our God is and the things he does in our lives. Today, if you look with me at Psalm 119, verses 121 through 128. Now, Psalm 119 is the longest psalm you'll find in the Bible. It finds itself written in what is known as an acrostic. That means it takes each one of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet and it assigns a few verses to it. So today, if you look with me at verses 121 through 128, we begin to see how God does something so powerful. You know, in the world in which we live, we have to always be mindful that God is going to take care of us. God is going to do what needs to happen in all of our lives. Today, it begins to talk about how we need God's mercies toward our enemies. Now, you know, many of us, we have seen what has happened in the land. We've seen all of the atrocities. We've seen people who've been killed. We've seen those who have been killed at the hand of law enforcement officers. We've seen those who have been murdered in these shootings. And um, I just don't understand um, how some of these things happen, but we'll understand it better by and by. So the psalmist writes and he says, God, I need for you to do something with all of these people, my enemy. He says to have mercy on me. And don't leave me to the mercy of my enemies. You know, there are people who we can consider the enemies. And that is those who represent evil and the one who does evil, that is the devil. But we find out the psalmist talks about don't let the arrogant oppress me because he has seen so much of what's happened in the land. And those people who feel entitled, those people who are arrogant, whenever they get in positions of leadership and power, they are, it seems like, have no mercy on anybody and they exact whatever they want to do. This becomes very critical in our current day and our age. Look at what's happening as we have seen the things that have happened in Elizabeth City, as we've seen all the things that have happened uh, years ago in Wilmington, North Carolina. We saw what happened out in Tulsa. It begins to remind us that there are some people that we need to say, God, don't leave us at their mercy. But God, I need for you to do something on my behalf. The psalmist begins to say this. He says, I am your servant. Deal with me with unfailing love. And I need for you to teach me your statutes and your degrees. Degrees. Because on the inside of me, God, I want to do something to act on your behalf because it seems like you're not moving fast enough. I don't know about you. Have you ever felt that way? I felt that way before. I said, God, I, let me help you get these people where they need to be. But, you know, God is God all by himself. We don't need to happen. We don't need to help him, but we need to just let him do what he does. So the psalmist is saying, Lord, please don't let me fall at the hands of their mercy. But I need for you to intervene. I need for you to act. So he says, give me discernment. Let your servant know how I should do what I should do. You know, in the world in which we live, we need to ask God for discernment, discernment to be able to walk into a room and to realize as you have conversation who we should be and should not be talking with to make sure that we can lift up those issues in our community that needs to happen. All of us need to know it is important for us to have persons of great integrity serving in elected positions and appointed positions. We have to make sure that we say, God, I need for you to help me to have the right conversation. Let me trust you. Let me do my part. Here in the text, he says, Lord, I need for you to act on my behalf. I need for you to do all that needs to be done. You know, in all of our lives, I guess we have felt like the psalmist does at this point. Because he goes through all of those verses leading up to this one right here. And we begin to see a change. He says, there are people who violate your instructions. And since they violate your instructions, God, I know you're going to take care of them. But boy, Lord, I wish I could help you. The Lord reminds all of us. Uh, we get into trouble when we try to help God. Because sometimes God allows people and allows us to go through things for the purpose of showing who he really is and allowing things to be transformative in all of our lives. I don't know about you, but I've had moments and times in my life where I said, Lord, 
you should let me help you because I know exactly how to get them in the place they need to be in. God doesn't do that. God wants us to just trust him. He wants us to make sure that we hold true to what we believe. It is throughout Psalm 119 that God gives instructions to his people. And he reminds his people that if you act in integrity, you will find out what God has done. We have to remember what he did for the children of Israel. God has always been a God of the oppressed. He has always delivered them no matter what the hand was. That's the reason we have to tell those who try to do strange things in the United States of America, you should pick up your Bible and look at what happened to Pharaoh. If God did something to Pharaoh for you messing with his people, he'll do the same thing for those who are contemporary leaders in our day. I don't know about you. I've learned to put my trust in the hand of Almighty God and not the hand of man. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. And I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you.